There's a lot of stuff. It's not a very good neighborhood, and Doolin School is. Yeah, there's a lot of meth around here. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a lot of violence at that school. Like, Doolin. Yeah. Doolin? Is it Doolin or? Doolin. Yeah. It's not a good neighborhood around here, though. I lived down there for like 10 years and mm -hmm. all my neighbors were like killing themselves or like Of stuff, it's not a very good neighborhood, and Doolin School of, is. Yeah, there's a lot of meth around here. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a lot of violence at that school. Like, Doolin? Yeah. Doolin? Is it Doolin? Or? Doolin, yeah. It's not a good neighborhood around here, though. I lived down there for like 10 years and mm -hmm. all my neighbors were like killing themselves or like drugs. Oh,
Now they're scaring him right. You wanna have a gun? You gotta be a cop. You gotta be a cop. Yeah, there's too many guns in Arizona. Seconds. I'll play for 30 seconds, okay. yeah. yeah. But we're filming him first, though. He is the. We could give him a song mm -hmm. before. Oh, they just pulled a gun out of his backpack. Oh. Now they're scaring him right. You wanna have a gun? You gotta be a cop. You gotta be a cop. <laughs> yeah, there's too many guns in Arizona.
Hi YouTubers, I thought I'd make a little video about the Banksy die-faced, defaced note. You may have seen these on the uh, Banksy documentary Exit Through the Gift Shop. Um, so I thought I'd just make a little video to show you the one that I've got here. You can see that the Queen has been replaced with Princess Diana and you can see that there's a, a blue serial number that runs down the side here. You can see here that the, the hologram isn't a real hologram, um, it's just printed on there. And then on the back, there's what would be the metallic strip. Obviously that's just printed on there. You've got the words, trust no one, down in the bottom right hand corner. There were 10,000 of these made, uh, according to the documentary. He says that they printed a million pounds worth. Um, so doing the math would mean there was 10,000. So there's a lot of these out there. That said, the, the copies are pretty easy to... To, to spot. Usually there's some weirdness going along the bottom here. They seem stretched out and also the proportions just start right. There's not a, a, a space around here. Um, that's on the ones I've seen anyway. should read along here Banksy of England. Um, and I don't know if you can see the quality on this camera. Uh, I'll try and zoom in a little bit for you. Or hold it a bit closer so you can see. This is what you should be looking for. Um, obviously when Banksy made them he scanned in a real £10 note so you can see uh, fold, kind of folded shadow shadow marks on this. That's from from the original that he used. Obviously he didn't have an original file to, to print money so he scanned in a, a real £10 note and you can see the fold marks printed in to the to his artwork there. Um, you can see the paper, That's the kind of paper it's on, and there we go.
It's probably been painted over by now. I wanted to catch the Banksy graffiti, but it just missed it because he's uh, it's already all painted over. I was fortunate enough to find out through Instagram, and uh, I saw this posted yesterday, and I came right after work to, you know, see this. Unfortunately, it's not here anymore. I don't know if it was done by the city or another artist that just doesn't like Banksy's work. We came all the way from Westchester, about 100 miles. I'm a real estate developer in Brooklyn, and we're putting... Um, street art and murals on all of our projects. Uh, it's a wonderful amenity for our tenants and it creates a vibrant neighborhood and streetscape. And New York's all about walking on the street. You're looking at a type of picture called graffiti from the Latin graffito, which means graffiti with an O. The children in this case represent youth. I take a lot of uh, photographs of graffiti around the city, so when I read there was a Banksy, so I was like, oh, I don't have any Banksy's in my uh, collection, so I wanted to come out and take one. I like to find the pictures on my own as I'm walking through the streets, but if they keep painting over all the Banksy's, I might have to buy one too. <laughs> I like it's kind of defiant. It's like a rebel, a rebel movement or like a rebel type of, of feeling. Like, he, he pushes boundaries, and, like, he makes artwork to make people, like, either think of things in a different way or, you know, probably just create upset or some type of emotion from people. So I don't know if this whole thing, this interview and everything, is his idea. I know he already posted another picture somewhere on the west side. I, I don't know that location yet, but uh, I know he's going to be here for a month, and I'm looking forward to see the other artworks. Uh, hopefully this doesn't happen again. in which humanity, humanity's future actually existed, particularly in the time of the Euro crisis circus, particularly that they are revealing their incompetency and their inability to bring real leadership. This is a prophetic calling which has taken place right here in this very, very, very small place, in this very small way. This occupation is not trying to be a utopia. It is a living intercession and supplication of activism and protest. The symbolic tents do not let them take those tents away. Those tents are deeply symbolic. And it's not deeply ironic that St. Paul was a bloody tent maker. Yet keep those tents there. Do not let them be taken away. This place is a living prayer of justice and of change. So moving on to the second observation, directed to the powers that be. Let me say this, there is a deep pattern of confrontation in what's going on here and what is found in terms of what happened to Jesus in the movement in there. Whether or not you're religious or not, forget this, but like, just check out this parallel of what's happened. The first thing that they confronted Jesus about was around crucial legal issues and about purity regulations. They tried to tap him on health and safety issues. The second thing they tried to do was, yeah, the next thing was just on issues of social order and the protection of the temple. They basically closed the temple's doors and basically said, keep out, you don't belong here, we don't want you here. So that was the second thing they tried to tap him on. I'm nearly done. The third thing 
thing they tried to do was they basically said, we're the custodians of these conversations. The Bishop of London, Richard Charles, gets up and says, leave it all to me, I hand it all to me, we'll, we'll take it in, we'll bring it in. Don't listen to that man. Do not listen to his lie. Do not listen to what he's saying. The conversation is not theirs, the conversation is ours. The last thing is, is that economic, political and religious leaders basically get together to regain control. That's what they've done. They tried health and safety. They tried to basically say, we need a bit of social order. It's all been very nice. All go home. They tried to take it back and say, this is our conversation, not your conversation. And then they basically sat down and said, that don't work. They Then what they do is they unleash, they try to undermine what you represent. They try to undermine it by empty tents. They try to undermine by too many campfires or too many beers or whatever. They just will come at you in every single way possible. And the last thing that happens is institutional violence. And I think that's why that geezer basically resigned the other day, because he knows, he knows what they're brewing up. Yeah, there is institutional violence. So the last thing is, is that all those things are happening, like it was in the first century, they're happening now, it means you're making a change. That's all right.
graffiti artist who then became like an artist. It's like fucking awesome. Yeah. So one of these culture jammers. Huh? Yeah, he's kind of. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to show my face to the world. I'm the bank. Russian bank. Nothing to worry about. Welcome back to Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer. We are here in Pleasant Stone with Gary Beadle's star on Banksy, The Room and the Elephant. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about the show? Yeah, it's a show, it's a play, a story about, um, a true story, about um, a gentleman who lived in a water tank by the side of the PCH, the Pacific Coast Highway near Malibu, and took residence in it, <coughs> and uh, made it his home with mosaic floors, lighting, he had TV reception in there, he had a security camera system that he fitted up, all these things. He collected trash and made it into his own and learned how to kind of be resourceful. And uh, it was very well known in the community. He had a lot of the help from the community, this guy. <coughs> his name is T'Challa Covington. And then Banksy came along uh, during the Oscar season uh, with Exit through the gift shop and uh, obviously didn't turn up to the ceremony, but ventured towards this water tank that sort of resembled um, an elephant to the artistic eye, because it had this like tailpipe coming out, it was like this in the distance, and decided to stencil the words, this looks a bit like an elephant on the side. Thus, you know, bringing all the world press to, the, you know, to descend onto this, this piece of art, which was actually an art before, it was actually created by T'Challa, um, and um, the local authorities consequently took it, repossessed it, leaving uh, to Chubba Covington, who lived in it homeless. And he lived in it for seven and a half years. So this play is about the character, to Chubba's character, who we've renamed Titus Co Coventry, who I play. It's a story about him breaking into the holding center where they're holding this tank, 
tank's not being sold, nobody wants to buy it, and he has a rant on YouTube. So it's a one-man show, him telling the story, and uh, very funny, tragic moments, but essentially a uh, very gripping, gripping true story. Now you mentioned there that this this is a one man show, yes. and this is your first one man show, isn't it? You, Certainly is. You've yeah. done a lot of done a lot of TV dramas. I think yeah. people will know you for that, yeah. and then probably City, Casualty, yeah. and so yeah. on. How is this different? How does it differ in terms of the acting preparation? Well, I I, I love theatre, mm. and uh, you know I love theatre, I love TV, I love film, <laughs> but I, I love theatre, I love the process of theatre, uh, the subtext, getting underneath uh, what the character's actually saying, and and being basically given more time to sort of like organically grow. Whereas I think in TV, it's, uh, I mean, no offense, but it's very instant. And I'm not really good at instant, you know. I'm, a, I'm an old boiler and I take a little while to warm up, <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, so yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's the, the major difference for me. And it suits me more because I like to get deep into something. And uh, this particular project uh, required me to do that. So I'm enjoying every single minute. The, the, the play itself, it gives a really fascinating insight into themes like homelessness and this almost pantheism, this interconnectedness with the world and God and nature. What do you think is the most significant message? I think the most significant message is, um, is, is it's sort of like a, it's a linear that runs all the way through the play actually. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a, a message of self-awareness. And, 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 and concluding to a moment where you think, actually, my, my wants aren't as important as my needs. I think that's the moral of the story. And, you know, you're talking about a man who's resourceful, you know, he's like, um, you know, he's an explorer, you know, and he knows how to make something out of nothing. I mean, he actually says that line in the play. So, you know, I think the story is really to, to, to sh the actual moral of the story is, um, is to put your your needs before your wants. And I don't think anyone's really encouraged to do that in this modern way we're living, you know. Everything's so disposable, we want, we want, we want. What we actually need is, uh, is almost forgotten. And it's, uh, it's a play about going back to basics, in that sense, yeah. It really, it really is phenomenal. And is, are there any plans to go beyond the fringe, to take it somewhere else in mm. the country? Good question. <laughs> uh, anyone out there watching? No, we, yeah, we've had um, a few, uh, quite a few offers yeah. that I can't really talk about. Yeah. But I, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be playing in London at some point um, yeah. in next year, I should imagine. Um, but uh, yeah, that is that was always the plan was to play it in London, to play it anywhere where anyone will have us, and I mean internationally, you know. So yeah. You can see Banksy the Room and the Elephant at 1 p.m. at Pleasance Courtyard, all the way until the end of the Fringe Run. That's right, we're there all the way to the end, except for the 13th of August and the 19th of August. Other than that, we've only got two days, two days off, but we're, we're working hard. And it, I think it's sold out today, so quick your tickets. Yeah, we, yeah, it's picking, it's picking up. So get in there, absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. This is Sean Paul reporting from outside St Paul's Cathedral. The Occupied London Banksy work of art based on the Monopoly board has been somewhat vandalised. The, um, the banker, I believe JP Morgan, who's broken and lost all his money, uh, has been taken away. The only movable part remaining is the boot, which I'm now going to take away for safekeeping. So this is a fabulous Banksy artwork. Um, you can see the poster, I'll get that put online shortly. Um, so this is us, so this is Sean Boyle reporting from uh, Tent City University, Occupy London, thank you, for our, for our new station, Occupy UK TV.
Banksy show tomorrow? Yeah, it's me. You coming? Are you talking about the Banksy, the, mm -hmm. the street artist guy? Mm -hmm. Hold this steady, will you? It's too dark. Doesn't matter. It's hard to capture the adrenaline of street painting when you're in a nicely lit studio with the kettle on. Maybe the people who steal graffiti off walls are onto something. The edge is still there. But those people are funny. They asked me to sign a letter of authentication saying I painted a certain piece. But that's basically a signed confession on headed note paper. <laughs> this is great, Chris. This is really, really good. Okay. <laughs>
People are taking the piss out of you every day. They butt into your life, take a cheap shot at you, and disappear. They leer at you from tall buildings, make you feel small, make flippant comments from buses that imply that you're not sexy enough and that the fun is happening somewhere else. They're on TV, making your girlfriend feel inadequate. They have access to the most sophisticated technology in the world, and they bully you with it. They are the advertisers, and they are laughing at you. You, however, are forbidden to touch them, trademarks, intellectual property rights, and copyright law. Then advertisers can say what they like, wherever they like, uh, and with total impunity. Fuck that. Any advert in the public space that gives you no choice whether you see it or not is yours. It's yours to take, rearrange, and reuse. You can do whatever you like with it. Asking for permission is like asking to keep a rock that someone threw at your head. You owe the companies nothing, less than nothing. You especially don't owe them any courtesy. They owe you. They have rearranged the world to put themselves in front of you, and they never ask your permission. Don't even start asking for theirs. They didn't go through the right. effort to get the permit. That's why I did it. So are you narking on someone for not getting a permit? To protest? That's like a, that's a First Amendment right. Oh. This Ridleyo is brought to you by friends of Blockchain.info It's a great place for Bitcoins to go. Would, uh, would any of you be willing to tell me what your main concerns are with Senator Bragdon so I can ask him a question with an ambush interview when he goes in? What about Senator Bragdon? Well, there are certain concerns with the way he's handling this whole situation, Absolutely. and I would like to ask him about your concerns when he goes in, if I can catch him. Uh, but I'm not fully un I'm not sure I fully understand what all your concerns were. Was there some kind of issue with him not meeting with you or something? Well, I don't know about any issues like that. Okay. My concern is that that 28,000 people are going to go without health care because of, of their ideology. I see. Because of ide ideology? Because of Bragdon's ideology. Uh, okay. <laughs> minders, minders everywhere. Aren't you the same? <laughs> the fame? Same. Same? All right, so I'm trying. I want to come up with some relatively tough questions to ask Senator Bragdon, but I'm not getting much from these folks yet. All right, now we have something more interesting happening.
effort to get the permit. That's why I did it. So are you narking on someone for not getting a permit? To protest? That's like a, that's a First Amendment right. Oh. I have another good comment, so... Okay. Thanks. Alright, you can hold on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you call the police, ma'am? CPD appears to be acing this one. This is way different from the way they handled a demonstration near the federal building a few years back when they tried to interfere with people's right to protest. Kudos. Oh, oh and a second car is second police car is pulling up already. I'm at a demonstration in Concord where uh, I guess oh, the demonstrators are like pro welfare demonstrators of a sort and for some reason after I started asking questions police started showing up and I'm getting video of them right now uh, and the, uh, the pro-welfare activists including Zondra Rice Hawkins have been going up to everyone I try to interview who agrees with them and trying to stop them from doing interviews with me uh, they have not tried to stop me from filming anyway I will be uh, I will be uh, <laughs> Back in touch probably around 6 p.m. if all is well. And if I am not back in touch, that means there's a problem. That is all. So again, did you call the police? Well, that's a really nice looking phone you got there. This Ridleyo is brought to you by friends of Blockchain.info. It's a great place for Bitcoins to go. Some call it the best site to create a free online Bitcoin wallet. They have apps for Android and iPhone, plus, get this, blockchain lets the encryption for your account happen inside your browser. That way even the site's owner can't access the account. It's just for you. 
Blockchain.info. It's a great place for Bitcoins to go. Hello, Manchester. Cowblock.org. Well, I won't back down. No, I won't back down. You can stand me up at the gates of hell, but I won't back down. Gonna stand Marvel Company nearby is close to can without intruding them. Stop, drop off some activists, they will film Marvel and Circle or find a place to park. The observers will watch and all be connected to each other through the new man for emergency cell phones. We have a lot of people, so it means a lot of accountability. Oh, photo op. <laughs> this looks like a mug shot. Yeah, you need lines across here. <laughs> Let's uh, go keep Manchester safe. All right. <laughs> the demo's on site. Looks like a white car. License plate Ruby. I've never seen so many people filming the thing. Hey man, here's our card. We just run a website called Cop Up. You alright? Alright, thanks, man. Marv's on scene. Across the street. Yes. Is there any victim here? Is there any victim in this We all pay your salaries. We'd like you to go home. So you feel good about this stop? Nobody harmed anybody? Thanks, man. You guys Be safe. You Hopefully, he doesn't steal any of your you money. Got off with a warning. You got yep. off with a warning. All you right. People. Thank you very much. The uh, person pulled over just left. Uh, officers are getting back to their vehicle. Let's focus on crimes with real victims tonight, guy. Or find a better line of work. People with badges don't have extra rights. This is an extra cop lock, Mark. We're all cop locking. We got folks behind us. Cop locking. Police are engaging filmers. I don't care. Name and badge numbers. That's fun. Good job, guys. You guys get a business card yet? You guys get a card? Check out our website, coplock.org. Who watches the watchers? Excuse me. Okay. That guy just made an illegal U-turn. Got it. Can we ask who the victim was for that? Just following around, making sure that they, How'd you guys know they pulled us over? We're, we're just cruising, cruising around. We got four cars cruising around, around yeah, in this well, thing, man. We got the technology here. We got the uh, we got the two ways. We got the uh, radio scan, the police scanner on the droid, and uh, we're trying to, trying to stay in touch. I'm in perfect position. We're mature. 
What are they being arrested for? It's none of your business. Can I have your name and badge number, sir? We're forced to pay for it, so no, you can't. apparently it is our business. Are you legally required to give me your name and badge number? No, I'm not. Okay, that's nice to know. How about you, sir? Can I have your name and badge number? I'll hop out. <laughs> <laughs> Right now on Cedar, off of the beach. We're pursuing. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin pursued. Pursu oh, he's going around the block. <laughs> Just to make sure we're following him. Yeah. Now he's gonna gun it. Yeah, he is. He knows he can outdo more. Oh. oh, he got caught at a red light. Cops are your friends. Always obey the cops. What speed are you doing, Pete? Uh, I'm going 28 right now. <laughs> He's going He's left going again. The block. We're standing by on Elm waiting for something to happen. This is Rich. Alright, we're going left on Laurel now off of Maple. Uh, Maple. He's gonna try to get us stuck. <laughs> <laughs> How's it feel? <laughs> South on beach again. <laughs> <laughs> we're patrolling. <laughs> Oh, he's going right. Oh, he's oh. changing it up. Uh, oh. Now we're going west. Oh, Central. he's gone now. Yeah, we just got him. We're right behind him. <laughs> 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 if you want to pass me, feel free, man. I think it'll be faster off the line. Oh, he's gone. Yeah. What's up, man? What's up, man? Is it TV? Okay, it's cop lock. <laughs> They're freestanding, you say. No victim, no crime. Arms on scene. Looks like they're leaving. Man, every time we show up. <laughs> it's working. So wait, what did they just say? That they had a... It was a phony stop. That it was a phony, it was a phony stop. stop. That the cop didn't pull anybody over, they just had their lights on. As soon as we showed up, they laughed, they got in their cars, turned off their lights, and yeah. ran away. You guys have a good night. You too. What's your name, sir? Did you have a name? So polite. How do you guys think it went? Fantastic. Good. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Good outreach Theft. tonight, it sounded like too. Yeah, I was um, uh, talking to a few people on the streets and they were extremely excited over the philosophy behind it and uh, what we were doing. We go out on that make sure they're held accountable. You should come with us. We're getting Intentional speech, proclaim sure. I can venture, Mr. Mention with no vengeance. I'm free. The same door, I've been knocking on for desperate need. The same floor, I've been crashing on for nesting my sleep. The same phone, they be tapping on explodes in a beat. The same floor, I've been dropping for the messes that teach. Hi, everybody. It's a demo with coplock.org. Yesterday, myself and several other coplock.org members, including Pete Ayer, headed to Plymouth, New Hampshire to cover a demonstration put on by foreign police officer Bradley Jardis. A lot of students voiced their concerns about the distractions that, that would be caused of people having firearms on their hips. A lot of other people who are pro-gun related that most would conceal carry and you wouldn't even know. This is a hard issue to get back and forth to people until this example came up. And again, someone who's of the criminal mindset is not going to announce that they're going to do something illegal. Any person can walk onto this campus at any time carrying a firearm. No one would know about it. Are you a police officer? Are you a police officer? Yeah. You are? What agency do you work for? Grafton County Sheriff's Department. You're Grafton County Sheriff's Department? What's your name? Detective Eric James. Detective Eric James. 
So here's a perfect example. This is Detective Eric James. He's currently a law enforcement officer in street clothes, and he's probably carrying a firearm. And nobody knew it. This is Detective Eric James of the Grafton County Sheriff's Department. He's, he's in a straight clothes. For all they know, I could be carrying a gun right now, and there's nothing they can do to prove it. And that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. Pretty ironic, isn't it? An undercover officer carrying a gun with no one knowing didn't bother anything that was going on that day and was actually what Brad and Tommy wanted to do themselves, only open carry, which is actually a more deterrent because who wants to mug the guy with a gun on his hip? I'd also like people to note in this video the police presence and their lack of uh, comment on the double standard of why police officers are a deterrent because they carry firearms and have the ability to arrest people but private individuals carrying fire, firearms and holding individuals accountable does not work to deter crime. Again, see these clips. I'm just uh, curious to hear if there's any, like, uh, what sort of meetings or anything's been communicated to y'all about the event going on today? Yes, we have multiple agencies working for this event today. And I can't give out any information regarding the event, but I assure you that everything do you yourself have any concerns? Do you think someone has a right to carry a firearm to defend themselves? Like I said, I cannot get about any information or my opinions about this event today, okay? Thank you. Do you guys have a, a personal opinion on someone's ability to carry here on campus? No comment on that. Do I see that uh, both of y'all looks like you're carrying. Is that, are there some double standards because you guys have badges? Choosing not to engage, to talk. All right, what do you think about today's events and like open carrying in the state of New Hampshire? I don't have a comment, but thank you. you. Have a comment? All right, what's your name, sir? Uh, Sergeant Hutchins. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're open to that. Just hope to hear your thoughts on the situation today and. Just want to be here, make sure everyone's having a good day. So. Right on. Do you have? Do you have any? Uh, comment about the uh, couple individuals that might show up in open carry. Have you guys had any like special meetings or training in preparation? Just, we're just here today. Make sure everyone's having a good day. Do you think individuals should be, do have the right to have a firearm? To carry a firearm openly? In New Hampshire. Here on this, on this public property at Plymouth State? I don't have any comment. Well, do you guys think you guys have the right to carry firearms because you have a badge, or what's the difference? It's just how they set it up. You know, I hope if you think you have the right to carry a firearm to defend yourself, you don't think it's your, the badge you wear grants that, that right. I mean, do you find it odd, though, that you report to work for the community and you don't want to have a conversation about it. Can you ask me why, like, you carrying guns keeps people safe but other people carrying guns doesn't? I mean, but you guys are choosing to abide by those rules. You, they only have uh, authority because people grant them that authority. Uh, cop block, Oregon. These cops were just videotaped by me. Yeah, seems like they're gonna uh, sit here and stalk me for a little while. 
because of the fact that I was videotaping. Bet you will be targeted for uh, something just for filming these cops. All right. Yeah, stopping by a couple bars, uh, filming public servants. Okay. What brings you out to right here? Well, it's just close enough to walk walking distance. Why? What's up? Okay. Oh no, I was just wondering if you happen to know these people that we're talking to, or. I don't. Even, oh, you got a car. Have you guys ever? I don't know. Cop block. Cop what? Cop block. No, I haven't. I have. That's what we're a part of. Okay. Uh, what exactly is that? What do you think about watchdog groups? 
Uh, you don't like him, huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't really give a rat's behind, to be honest. Whoa. But you guys do know that you're required to let us know that you're recording us, right? Well, I thought in Oregon that um, by you seeing me nope. record, well, so we're recording. You have to at least let us know. We're recording. So, okay. So, check yourself, right? For sure. Okay. Just like when, if we pull someone over and we're recording, we have to tell them we're recording. Right on. Same deal with us, okay? You just cool. Let us know, all right? No problem. All right. You don't know these guys? No, I have no clue what right. that is. I can hardly see the car from here. Okay. All right. Cool. Have a good night. All right. Take it easy. Okay. Well, you ain't even recording, nigga. It's all good. You suck. Chicken down, huh? This is this. This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by Freaking.com. Let's talk cop block and their interesting new endeavor. The early 20th century author G.K. Chesterton, Chesterton, once said, "Ideas are cheap, but what really counts is doing an idea." What Cop Block is doing now is sort of the realization, or the attempted realization, of an idea that's been kicking around for a long time. There was an article back in 2002 on Antistate.com by Warren Tilson. It recommended the establishment of a freedom insurance institution. Tilson said, quote, What I am proposing is a system of insurance that if you are arrested on some political crime, lawyers will be dispatched as well as activists and propagandists." Unquote. Tilson correctly recognized that the first hurdle that such an organization would have to jump over, and the biggest hurdle, would be protecting itself. Well, copblock.org has instituted a program it calls copblock.org protection. Whether they read Tilson's article or not, they have essentially started doing, or trying to do, what Tilson had in mind. Although they seem to be missing the lawyer aspect. If you go to copblock.org slash protection, you'll see uh, that at least as of uh, early January, or some, some point during January 2013, they were already offering copblock.org protection memberships. For around $50 a month, they were promising to uh, come to your aid in the event that you got in trouble, uh, certain types of trouble anyway. They said they would provide a video, a media push, a social network push. They would gather information regarding your situation, or uh, presumably uh, this would involve background searches of the people who are coming after you. Uh, and they would have a man on the ground who would uh, be with you in person to assist with various stuff that you, you, you might need. So it seems like it was almost exclusively focused on uh, using the media and, uh, and their own publicity capability to uh, put pressure on anyone that comes after you for victimless crime, uh, if, if they're from the government anyway. However, Tilson's warning may have already borne fruit, this idea that you have to protect yourself first <laughs> as an organization doing this kind of thing. The uh, copblock.org slash protection is already uh, out of action in a sense. There, there's a message on the, the page that says, quote, this idea is currently on hold. You can review the information, but no memberships are being accepted at this time. If you're currently a member, Adamo will be in contact with you shortly and your membership services are still covered, unquote. So maybe I should say they're partially out of action. Now, I don't know if this was because they received uh, threats or if it was because they got too much uh, response, were overwhelmed with numbers. But they've taken, I think, this idea further than anyone else ever has toward being a reality. I think back around 2006, I experimented with the, the idea of doing something like this myself. I determined that the numbers weren't really adding up, uh, and then the Ridley Report took all the wind out of the sails of everything else I was looking at doing. So I didn't get very far with the idea. They, they've gotten further than I have. But one thing I would say, it seems like they, 
they were they will probably need if they want to do something like this they're going to need more than just the ability to to provide media coverage i think they need a more holistic approach uh tilson was on the money when they when he said they need lawyers involved in something like this I like the way you put it. Lawyers will be dispatched, as well as activists and propagandists. You need a mix of all three, probably. Something else to keep in mind is that you um, you don't want to just have someone trying to generate media. You It would be better if you had someone uh, besieging the offices of the people who have arrested you. Peaceably besieging. Uh, but you know uh, the idea is if you if you get arrested and you're covered by you know some kind of freedom insurance organization, the arrest is for a victimless crime. Well, not only do you have a lawyer immediately springing to action, not only do you have attempts at drawing media coverage to your grievances, but you've also got protesters on the scene quickly. To their credit, copblock.org is not promising the lawyers or the the active the, you know the, the protesters which maybe they I don't know if they can deliver that yet uh, they're not promising it but I think probably need, they're gonna need to get to a point where they can and where they can deliver it again if they move forward with this project which again they don't really seem to be moving forward with it right now it, it, I mean the fact that they've gotten to the point where they, there are some people who are already covered I guess they're going to have to move forward on those folks, so something's going to happen with this. It's just it's good to see someone taking something from the idea phase to the action phase. Even if this fails, uh, all of us will learn a lot from it, and the next attempt will probably be more successful. Uh, the guys at Cop Block seem to have been pretty effective at generating media for you know whatever concerns they have. Uh, and uh, in court, they've had some success. Uh, it's mixed, uh, but definitely they've had uh, they've had some success. They seem to be a little bit of a magnet for cop attention. So I'm not sure if they are the guys that you turn to to try and avoid cop attention. <laughs> My take on them is that they tend to slightly overplay their hand here and there which causes the government to massively overplay its hand, in which case the government gets slapped down. They're doing pretty well. Um, they've taken some pains uh, to make clear that they can't get you out of a ticket, they can't make a prosecution stop, but they, uh, they want to make sure that you're not alone. Now, one critique I have uh, is the name of the organization. Um, calling it copblock.org protection well, protection sounds a little bit too much like protection racket, right? I mean, it just makes it, it it's, it's uh, not the best choice of words because obviously there are people out there that, that have misused the word protection and sort of <laughs> dragged it down as so many other words have been dragged down. On the other hand, I'm almost never in favor of changing names, so <laughs> I guess they're kind of stuck with it, but... Um, We'll see. I mean, they've obviously run into some kind of hurdle or something is slowing them down or stopping them because of this disclaimer that just appeared on their website. So we'll see where this goes. I'm glad there's uh, at least some, some, something new to talk about. Someone's trying something new to uh, limit the state. You can find out more directly at copblock.org slash protection. And if you want to read the article that, that uh, sort of got this idea rolling initially, this concept uh, from 2002, then just look at the video descript. I've posted a link. What are you arresting this man for? You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling and the list of reasons to move has just been updated. For details, visit freekeen.com. No.
Okay. Um, do you have... Where are you going? Do you have... No specific reason. We're just returning... Returning... I mean, this guy, Okerman, he's always been cool, but... He's feeling... He's feeling the, uh... I'm only doing this to him because, uh, his buddy... I got... Cop blocking. Help you guys. No. I just, uh... I'm just curious if you saw something, or... I don't... Yeah, I don't even know what happened. I just pulled up. I wanted to know why. I was curious. No. What do you think about watchdog groups in Oregon? Police accountability groups. What time is it, Aaron? You know, approximately? Alright, I'm cool. Alright, I'm It's kind of scary to have somebody like trying to get the view you're having. Oh, you're trying to get the view I'm having. Yeah, I'm having, right? See what's, uh, no, you just told me you're not comfortable standing there. No, I'm not comfortable when the armed man walks up on me like all menacing, like you know, it's it's not it's it it, it doesn't like you know make me feel comfortable I'm not at all. You. That that's kind of what it looks. Like. Okay, Listen. if someone else walked up to you with their hand on a weapon, my how would you feel? Is my way. Why can't I have? Like I said, you walked up close to me and put your hand on a weapon. It makes me uncomfortable. So somebody that wasn't a cop walked up to somebody else. The day I leave a public sidewalk because of a cop telling me to do so when I'm not breaking any laws? I didn't tell you to leave. I just said you're free to go. Oh. Don't let it happen. It depends on you. Okay, Listen. if someone else walked up to you with their hand on a weapon, how would you feel, officer? All right, we're in Edgeworth, PA. We're about to do a warning drivers of speed traps, and we're going to use this. Look, he's pulling out. Here he comes. Where? We can get in trouble for this. We can get in trouble for this. Are you sure? I don't want to film him. Why not? Because you're not doing nothing wrong. That's the plan, Joe. Look, here's another one. Here they go. Huh? They're coming. We're going to pull you out. You're the wrong thing, though. This is a gang member. This is a member of the world's largest gang. This is a police state. This is a police state without your tax dollars. Any questions? Badges don't grant extra rights! Yeah! One more time! They got their riot shields, tear gas and black batons. This ain't protected, so it's clear to see what side they're on. They think that they
Stopwatch is a decentralized network of a diverse group of individuals that advocate police accountability and the dissemination of uh, learning one's rights, knowing how to safeguard their rights, and then uh, eventually connecting and collaborating with, with like-minded people in their own area to have a big impact, to a positive impact. Right, so right now I'm on the Cop Block Tour, just generic title, but uh, I've been on the road about a month. It's a, it's a real quick paced tour, about 4,000 miles, um, going to a couple dozen cities in total and uh, it's 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 a very short fast paced tour compared to in the past I've done some cross country tours in an RV with some friends under different projects called Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tours and with those projects we you know we'd spend like up to a week in each town do a lot of outreach maybe have a capstone event at the end of the week cover stories locally interview a lot of people and you know before we hit the road we spent months doing logistics ahead of time to identify point people and stories that we could put a help put a spotlight on but this tour was is is pretty fast paced it's uh, mainly the goals of it are to help connect people that are local that might not know of each other uh, before so that they can start working together going forward and then also to inject uh, the complete liberty idea into the conversation of police accountability so with these couple dozen stops, I pretty much, it's not a stop every day. Sometimes there's a day off where it's a work day or just a travel day. But uh, I left from New Hampshire, from Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, and then I went south to North Carolina and then I went west to Kansas City. And now I'm kind of going east, northeast, back to New Hampshire. So um, I was fortunate to have freekeen.com as uh, my featured sponsor. And then, you know, just folks who like the content that's being produced, they might donate to help keep me going. But uh, it's been really good thus far, you know, every stop's different based on the folks in each city or uh, kind of the vibe of what's going on, the, the tactics that have been tried or not tried. So it's been been uh, a good use of time, I think, for myself and been able to connect with some really good people. Uh, this is I'm actually near the, nearing the end of this cop block tour. So after Rochester is Syracuse, where a guy named Kurt Williams has started a Syracuse cop block mm -hmm. chapter. And, uh, and then after that, I'll be back in New Hampshire for the Liberty Forum, which is uh, an event in Nashua that has maybe 500 or so liberty oriented people that will show up for uh, sessions in a hotel. And uh, I'll be speaking about cop lock and be on a panel about non-political activism. So uh, just about done. So with uh, on the tour, since it is so fast paced, I don't have the time, uh, since I'm going solo as well, don't have the time to really edit the content I'm collecting. So I've been streaming content live to a Bamboozer channel, and then I've, the HD content that I capture, I've been putting on a YouTube channel. And then when I get off the road, I plan to edit that up into some videos and things. But so what I, what I try to do, uh, I think police accountability is a very timely conversation. A lot of people themselves have been, have negative interactions with police or know somebody who has. And, and so I think a lot of people are sort of disillusioned and looking for alternatives that can be pursued. So I try to inject in that conversation uh, the ideas of self-ownership, the non-aggression principle, and, and things like that. Um, I don't believe that police, policing as a structure today can be fixed or that, you know, a band-aid solution will offer any remedy. I think the whole structure of it um, should be, should be seen for what it is, which is a course of monopoly that at the end of the day subsists on theft. So I don't believe uh, an institution that purports to protect people can ever do that when it's founded on theft. When they say everybody who lives in this area, you owe us money or else. And uh, so I, I just think since there's these perverse incentives, it's always going to fail. Mm -hmm. And so I try to go around and inject into that conversation sort of a complete liberty idea where if something's wrong for me or you, it can't become right for someone with a badge. And so, you know, I equate, you know, the, the tactics that are used today to, you know, their, it's initiation of force. And there might be, and it's not necessarily an anti-police, like an individual, mm -hmm. I'm against all cops message. It's a, uh, we need to... Uh, I believe we're each free to act so long as we're not initiating force. And so if there's a, a person who's a police employee who's led by good intentions, you know, I might, I might have a conversation and say, you know, we, we have a similar end goal. We want to live in a safe, prosperous community. But I suggested a different means to get there, one that relies on consensual interactions instead of coercive interactions. Every stop thus far on the tour has been different based on the folks in each town and the, and the um, community and, and uh, things like that. So my first stop was in Bridgeport, Connecticut. You know, I hooked up with uh, my buddy Angel who started a Connecticut cop lock group out there. And that was the most hostile interactions I've had thus far on the tour. And 
you know, it was just us and, and his wife on the streets doing a lot of outreach, which was nice. But then, you know, when we did see a traffic stop, there was three squads who had pulled someone over and we just were out there on foot filming. And right away they called back up and four squads came lights and sirens, shining their spotlights at us, threatening to take our cameras and essentially just being really, have, uh, creating a hostile situation. You know, I, I'm sure they would have loved to put us in a cage and whatever. So any, after 20 minutes or so of that, we ended up leaving on foot. And two hours later, we returned to get my vehicle. And one of the police employees was sitting right there just idling behind my vehicle and they had ticketed it, said it was blocking the sidewalk, which it was. And I have, you know, video of that. But I engaged, we had a conversation with this guy for 20 more minutes and it was it was very hostile. And they followed me out of the city, followed me down the interstate, you know, and it was like, uh, you know, I can understand how some people view the police, their interactions almost like an occupied army because in that in those situations, who do you call, you know? I mean, I encourage people not to call 911, not to rely on these folks because a lot of times if a police employee comes, it can aggravate the situation and, uh, you know, courts have ruled that Police have no duty to protect the individual, so th these are just um, so that was one instance, very hostile. But we've all, I've also had other stops, like in Nashville. I gave a sort of a know your rights presentation at Vanderbilt University, and I pointed Detroit as being like a very good stop in terms of the objectives of this tour to try to connect people because some of the like folks who turned out among the couple dozen were the founders of Metro Detroit Cop Block, and other folks were people who lived down the street who had essentially homesteaded 10 houses but between a few dozen people and they were doing urban farming and had animals and things like that and then there was another group of people that were like peaceful parenting unschooling so it was a real good uh forum for everybody to meet and then collaborate in kansas city there's a there's a casey missouri cop lock group and they had been online before but hadn't really met in person and so they're like, planning activities you know to hit the streets someone could edit video someone could you know, right things. So it's pretty interesting to see those kind of things come together. Yeah, one of the one example I'd point to was in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, it's, it's a town I wanted to stop through a few years ago due to the uh, number of police, a uh, number of dogs being shot by police employees there. Something Davy has covered uh, extensively here in Rochester on Cop Block and his his other sites. But uh, so in Columbia, there was a group of folks who got together. They formed a keep Columbia free and they drew put a lot of attention on the use of uh, uh, SWAT teams to go in and raid houses for selling substances other people said were illicit and for shooting dogs and things so they they were so effective that there hasn't been a SWAT team used in town there since late to, since November 2011 on someone for like a drug related issue so that that was you know at least push that police state back a little bit but uh, one of my favorite examples of, of accountability is uh, happened in Key, New Hampshire this past summer. I mean, this isn't a tour thing, but it's a tactic that can be replicated. And that was uh, after a friend of ours, Derek J. Freeman, got uh, assaulted by a Keene police employee, Fit and Moore. We, you know, we had a lot of cameras out there that captured that, so that was heavily documented. But later that evening, we went outside Fit and Moore's house and uh, sang a song that was like very, you know, positive and friendly. And then a num couple of us went to his neighbor's houses and said, "Hey, uh, like." I'd want to know if I lived next to someone who was aggressive, and I just wanted to take a second to, you know, today uh, to let you know that today your neighbor Fenton Moore assaulted a, somebody, and it was uncalled for. And here's a link to the video; you can check it out yourself. And you know, that was pretty much it. So uh, to me, that was very effective because instead of saying the Keene Police Department is in the wrong, we say no, this individual who acted was in the wrong. So that's something at Cop Lock we try to uh, promote, like holding individuals accountable for their actions and not just letting them get away with things and, and point to like a, a group of people. You know, if there was a, a corrupt, a heavy-handed police employee here in Rochester, uh, if, if it wasn't known where they live, let's say, but the home demonstration was something uh, that was desirable, I would just solicit that info because if it's not easily available, someone who sees that might have it and share it with you like off the record or perhaps someone who, who has skills in obtaining that information through electronic means might be willing to ascertain that for you as well. Nine of us actually were arrested in Manchester, New Hampshire, and uh, this was the summer of 2011. There had been, uh, about a year prior, there had been an individual who was beat up by four Manchester police employees outside of a bar, and uh, right away the chief said, oh, they didn't act in the wrong, and a few months later the state attorney general said, oh, it wasn't their best day, but we're not going to go after them. 
So soon after, myself and Adamo and a few dozen other folks went outside the, the uh, Manchester gang's headquarters and we were uh, holding signs. I was trying to have conversations with police employees and some people were riding with chalk on the sidewalk and the walls. And it wasn't until somebody uh, wrote on the police memorial you know, area on this brick wall, how many is Manch PD slain, that some police employees came out and made some arrests, eventually uh, kidnapping and caging nine of us and taking nine phones and cameras and they st my camera was stolen and claimed to have never been taken and stuff. So anyway, from that, uh, we, we spent a couple months in Manchester doing outreach because, you know, we, we, we think it's important not just to subject your, allow yourself to be subjected to uh, legal land, to court by, you know, just go in there and try to play by the rules because, you know, they, if, if you allow a, a group of people to create rules to then interpret rules, you know, they're always, their incentive is to side with themselves and their own actors. Uh, what everybody knows if it's your word against someone with a badge's word in legal land, they're often going to side with the latter. Mm -hmm. So we try to really work outside the court ahead of time to win in the court of public opinion to make known what's going on and, and who is actually the aggressor through documentation, video, and other things. So we spent a couple months in Manchester doing outreach. We had DVDs, like thousands of DVDs made up with Manchester related videos and other videos and distributed them. We, we did outreach like everywhere we could and a couple of the kids that ended up being uh, receiving a DVD, went to Manchester's West High School. And uh, soon after, one of those students witnessed his friend be assaulted in the high school by the school liaison officer named Darren Murphy. And they, the school employees initially came up to that student who filmed and told him to delete the footage. Hi, my name's Frank Harrington. I go to West High School and today I got assaulted by a cop. This is a really boring really video so far. Freedom of the press. The U.S. citizen. I'm not going to the. You're crazy. You're crazy. This is, are you kidding me right now? Yeah, we're recording something. You're not supposed to be recording it. How am I not supposed to be recording this? Are you thinking your head? Do you not know this is a freedom as a U.S. citizen in the world? Do you realize I could sue you for thousands and thousands of dollars right now for doing that? See, this is why I'm taping this right here. See this right here. This is why I'm taping that. Get out of here. Don't talk to her like that. Hit. I'm videotaping this. I have a freedom to do this. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I have on video and things like that. He deleted a couple like other pictures and whatever else, but kept the footage. They later went to the mainstream news outlet in town, who said, "Yeah, we're kind of interested. Come back another time." And then they found us, and uh, so we ran that video, the raw video that showed this kid essentially being slammed on the table, his head off the table because. He had taken his sister's purse as a joke in school, you know, they had already talked and had planned to give it back to her and it was like pretty much a non-issue, but when the police employee told him he was going to be arrested and the student swore about it, the police employee, I would say, overreacted and slammed him on the table. I mean, I know if I treated a kid like that, I'd be in the wrong and people would want to hold me accountable mm -hmm. because this guy has a badge on, he was given a free pass by the school admin and, and the police department everything. So. The day after that incident, the demo called the police department in Manchester, and he called the school. And uh, for that, he was, you know, he, he identified himself as a demo Freeman from coplock.org, seeking comment. And uh, New Hampshire's what's called a two-party consent state, so the he ended up being charged with uh, three counts of felony wiretapping, which doesn't make sense because for it to be a felony, even it had to be a party like uh, independent of the conversation. It should have been a misdemeanor, if, if anything. But again, there's no victim. He was seeking accountability. So he, sh he was actually doing something just. But um, so fast forward, he, uh, he ended up having a court date for that and uh, a jury trial. And we had, you know, uh, 90 to 100 people in the court to support him and a lot of media. But uh, even so, he tried to make a jury nullification argument and point out that he was doing acting in the right. But uh, they ended up finding him guilty and uh, of three counts of felony wiretapping. So they event they essentially sentenced him to a year in a cage with nine months suspended. So he sat in Manchester's Valley Street Jail for three months this past fall, and then from the other two felony counts, he has uh, years hanging over his head if he uh, acts up. Essentially, it's it's really it's worded very vaguely. So 
he's uh you know he faces and that's for the next five years so he's essentially um you know living his life now doing his thing and and uh you know recognizing that uh how arbitrary i guess all this is and and uh, just trying to i don't know uh be effective for himself and for for people close but uh, he is appealing the conviction. There's a, um, a lawyer in New Hampshire named Brandon Ross who's uh, representing him, and uh, it's supposed to be heard by New Hampshire's Supreme Court later in this in the spring. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where that goes. But you know, again, I mean, I know he didn't do anything wrong, and everybody you know who can think with half a mind. So you know, whatever they do, um, you know, we'll see where it goes. A lot of the backstory and related videos are, can be found at copblock.org slash free ademo that's a-d-e-m-o but uh, I would just say I mean if people want to help him I would just encourage them to uh, speak out against in injustices they see in their area I mean this can't just be a demo doing something or me or Davey or the person watching it's got to be everybody you know the more good people step up and work together you know then th the better off we'll be and the sooner off we'll get we'll get to the uh, you know the kind of community we want to live in you know one that's for me absent this uh, institutionalized violence that we see today I mean police brutality and these double standards will continue to happen you know there's definitely not a lack of content if you look at coplock.org or any of these other outlets you'll see that but um, so the question is how do we mitigate that and to me it's to strike the root and just withdraw your tacit consent for the whole idea that some people have a right to uh, initiate force. Hopefully there, maybe there's some police employees that watch this. I'd encourage them to act according to their conscience. You know, they might be, again, well-intentioned, but uh, recognize that, and I'm sure they know even better than myself, or, uh, you know, uh, the perverse incentives that exist in that institution, and, you know, not speaking out only allows for, for bad things to continue. And, you know, if, if the police employee does a good job, people would, uh, there's a demand for safety and security, people would voluntarily hire them and then they wouldn't have to worry about enforcing things they don't morally agree with or that pe or work with colleagues that are heavy handed or brutal. So along that line we made a Welcome Leo's page on Cop Block that I, I hope uh, police employees check out and you know we have a friend who after 11 years as a cop in New Hampshire quit his job and because of the drug war he couldn't, uh, couldn't continue to put people in cages for that so I hope to see more of that going forward.